So yes, uh, I'm going to show you a demonstration that illustrates precisely those points that Michael just made, the different stacks, layers of the TIBCO analytics platform and the personas that interact with those. And the context here is a challenge that was issued to us uh, recently for a, a conference in, uh, in Sydney, actually a global conference. We still yet to deliver it uh, in the US and in Europe. Um, uh, the focus you'll see today is, is more around uh, APAC and Australia and New Zealand. Um, but we were challenged to look at health outcomes um, as expressed in life expectancy uh, around the globe. Uh, based on inputs that are largely some socio-economic in nature. Um, and if you want to read the full details of how we did this, including the, the technology and the statistics and so on, you can take a look at our TIBCO community blog. There, actually, you'll also find um, a, a more current uh, a blog that Michael has been leading with the data science team at TIBCO on the current outbreak. Uh, this is less uh, focused on, on, on the specifics of any particular uh, health crisis and more just on general health outcomes. Um, uh, but I think it'll amply demonstrate the sort of personas uh, that Michael was just talking about. So let me switch to the live demo. Uh, here you see I'm logged in um, as myself, in fact, to uh, our TIBCO data science platform. And this is not a, a fake system. This is actually where we run most of our analytics projects, including the one that I was just talking about. And you can see just uh, a few weeks ago, there was a little spike of a few days where um, part of my team was focused on uh, modeling life expectancy for uh, countries around the world. And so you can see the spike of activity really over the course of three or four days, the team came together because we sort of learned about the challenge a little bit later. We didn't have much time to work on it. Uh, and actually we sort of turned that to our advantage. How can we rapidly bring a team together to produce some, some meaningful analytics as quickly as possible? So here in this workspace, everything in the TIBCO data science world is, uh, is divided into project workspaces. And you can see uh, the recent activity here, including that blog that I was just mentioning um, on the current outbreak, which I added to this workspace. Um, uh, but again, but getting back to this particular analysis, this was the team that was working on it. If I look at the team in general, you'll see uh, we've got here a data engineer, business analyst, data scientist, myself as the owner of the project, uh, listed out as well as some other people who are just sort of auditing. Um, and that's really what I want to call out as I go through the demo is how these different uh, personas interacted with each other. We even actually <laughs> changed our names just to call out uh, the roles that we were playing. So uh, you'll see I start out um, in the persona of Neil, who is our business analyst, who was working with Spotfire to do some initial data wrangling, get the data prepped and come up with some initial insights before he then passed off to me to sort of set up the data science side of the project uh, and do some, some very basic analysis as sort of a um, uh, sort of a, a business owner. Uh, and then I handed off to Prem, who is our data scientist, um, um, perhaps what one might arguably call a sort of citizen data scientist or a, um, um, a data analyst, um, who then did some preliminary modeling uh, with some assistance from Emily, a uh, machine learning engineer or data engineer who was doing some work in Python, uh, before we then yielded the results back to Neil uh, for review in Spotify. So this was the little team that was working together. And as I say, just in a few days, we produced something uh, that you're now about to see. Um, all of our work is collected here together in the, the work files area. So you see here visual workflows, Python, and SQL, notebooks, uh, predictive models that we've exported, uh, links to Google Sheets and so on. Pretty much everything is collected here. Uh, and then sort of audited over time through this sort of interactive activity stream. Um, let me focus to start with on the dashboard that Neil created as the business analyst. This is in Spotfire, running on the web. In fact, everything you're seeing here is running in cloud. It can also run on premise, of course, but um, uh, here we're running everything on Amazon and using Amazon data sources. And so here's what uh, Neil started with. He did some basic uh, pivoting and unioning of data sets to get a com comprehensive data set. We decided because the data set was relatively small, we wanted to bring in data from really a around the globe and not just focus on uh, the initial area, which was Australia and New Zealand. And so we'd have just more data points. So there's the data. Uh, we found that there were a lot of missing values. Uh, Spotfire automatically actually pointed that out to us, made some suggestions about charts that we could look at in order to dig further. Um, if you see here, for example, there's a nice little chart showing the, these missing values that uh, Neil endeavored to fill in. You'll see, for example, there's a 
potentially quite useful variable here about population living in urban areas, but really very little data across the different countries and across the years, it went from 2000 to 16, uh, 2016, uh, contraceptive usage, some economic factors, uh, trading factors, and so on, uh, as well as the actual variable that we're interested in, life expectancy at birth. And fortunately, there you can see there are no missing values. We looked at a variety of different methods of filling in those, those values here in, in Spotfire. Um, we can actually use some R code embedded within our dashboards uh, to uh, fill in val missing values using basic sort of interpretation like linear interpolations, more advanced methods using sort of piecewise, uh, using splines. Um, we decided to stick with linear. It actually seemed to give pretty good results. It was quite simple. And so having done that, um, uh, Neil was then able to uh, fill in the missing values. Here you see the results after. There's still some way you just don't even have enough data to interpolate, but it's much more comprehensive and, and rich data set now. Um, Neil then sort of started playing around with this. He uh, uh, looked at perhaps some uh, initial measures of variable importance using a basic regression that's built into um, the data relationships uh, a tab within, um, within Spotfire. Um, he also built a, a basic dashboard here, um, just looking at different countries and looking at um, values of life expectancy, uh, just to get a, a, a broad sense of what was happening from country to country. Again, we're focusing here on Australia and New Zealand, so I can sort of isolate that in the map here, just to call that out. I can look across different countries, see here the Nordic countries, perhaps not surprisingly, uh, having particularly um, high percentiles in terms of um, uh, longevity, um, um, significant improvement over the 16 years, 17 years for Ireland. Um, but at this point, Neil decides to hand over to the data science team to do a more advanced analysis. Uh, so that's where I come in to sort of set up this project. I create this workspace link back to the Spotfire dashboard from within here. Uh, and I actually created a very simple, so think of me as sort of, you know, the idiot manager <laughs> doesn't know what he's doing, but can do some basic stuff here using this visual workflow. Uh, so I'll open this up. And what I did is I did a very simple classification. We just said, let's look at a histogram of life expectancy um, and see if there's sort of a cutoff point for countries that are doing well and not so well. And we'll just do a binary classification. So that's what we do in some of these simple steps here. And I was able to do this, no coding required here. So for example, if I want to fill in some additional missing values, I can just check those here and pick whether to use a fixed value or an aggregate or a median, for example. Very easy for me to do that, create a, a binary outcome variable, and then do some basic modeling. For example, here I built a simple decision tree to look at sort of what uh, variables might be interesting for this particular analysis. Um, also, I used our AutoML orchestrator. Uh, this is a really great feature that allows me to take um, something like a binary variable and build an automatic model, uh, build a set of classification models automatically and get a leaderboard at the other end that just shows me now which are the, which are the best models. Here it's actually recommending a logistic regression and it'll actually produce for me a comprehensive set of explicit workflows so that it doesn't just give me a model and a recommendation and a set of statistics it actually constructs the entire workflow from data access to data prep to features feature selection modeling even out to explainability we even have an entire workflow built out that not only strings together all of the best transformations and models that the automel finds but then actually builds some explainability and pushes that back to spotfire so you can get a sense of not just which models are best, uh, but also why they're best. So that's the AutoML. Again, very easy for me to do that as sort of the, the business lead here. Um, I can also build, without any coding, just some basic classification models here, use standard techniques like ROC curves and confusion matrices um, to figure out um, uh, which ones are doing well. But I've sort of reached the limit of my expertise here, so I'm going to hand off to a real data scientist, Prem. And, and this is the workflow that Prem created um, uh, this is a full modeling workflow. We're actually going to predict life expectancy here, so numerical regressions. You've got some help here from the rest of the team. As I mentioned, Emily uh, created some Python notebooks, and I sort of contributed some ideas as well as Neil, some findings from his dashboard. Let me open up and just sort of show you briefly what Prem did in his workflow. You'll see there are some other workers uh, using this right now. Um, so we did a similar uh, process of data munging up the 
uh, at the beginning of the workflow, we use a method called correlation filter, which we really like to use, which basically says, look, there's, there are actually, I think, hundreds of socioeconomic factors that were in this data set. So we need to trim those down a little bit. And we use various techniques for doing that. Um, one of them is just simply to look at any variables that are strongly correlated with each other. Some of these employment variables, for example, sometimes have actual perfect correlations. So we just throw those out of the data set and pass that on to the rest of the workflow uh, to simplify things and to make things easier, ultimately for the business analyst to review which things were most important. Uh, then we do standard things like normalization, split into a training and testing set based on uh, time variable. Uh, and here we're not building classification models, but actual uh, regression models. So you can see here the linear regression with its residual and QQ plots and gradient boosting, some ensemble methods here, uh, random forest as well, uh, yielding variable importance. We build that model, uh, run some predictions, um, build a regression evaluator to analyze some statistics about which model is best. We also look at predicted versus actual charts. I think we found in this particular case, this is analyzing all uh, data from all countries. Um, the linear regression seems to do pretty well. But in any case, we, we can export some of these models out now for both real-time and batch scoring. And what we also did, and you'll see this come into play in a, in a couple of minutes when I go back to the dashboard, we actually filtered down to one country. Uh, the filter here uh, is actually parameterized, so we say the country should equal a passed-in parameter, which is the name of the country, um, which is going to be, say, Australia or the UK or Ireland or whatever. And then we just build an individual regression there. Um, in order to determine what the measures of variable importance are for that specific country. And we're going to publish these results back to Spotfire so that we can yield the outcome of this complex workflow, this modeling workflow, back to the simplicity of the dashboard, um, as you'll see in a second. There are many ways of doing that, by the way. First of all, you can actually take the output of any one of these operators and surface that directly in the, in the Spotfire dashboard using the data function that Michael mentioned. You can also emit a data file um, that is going to be ready for reading by Spotfire in a Spotfire format, or you can just write it out to a database and Spotfire can access it through its database interactivity. So I'll get back to that in a second. There are other methods of deploying models that I just want to mention um, that we could have used. Uh, as I said, we're focused really just on deploying back to Spotfire. But here's one method. For example, we can export those models, as you saw me do with that linear regression. We can load that up and do, use it for batch scoring. So here's a very simple way of doing batch scoring. You can load a model that was developed on Hadoop and deploy it to Oracle, for example. Very easy sort of cross-platform model deployment here for batch scoring. I can then schedule that workflow. Uh, here we have a workflow that runs every day. Um, it runs uh, two workflows, some custom modeling in Python, um, and, uh, and, and then the workflow that I just showed you. Uh, and that can be scheduled. Uh, we can also run for real-time scoring. Here is an engine that I have ready. Um, and this is simply taking an export of one of those models that I built. And at literally the click of a button, I can deploy that engine as REST service. And now it's available here. I think I've copy pasted some data here. So this is just passing in data for a particular country. And you run it, and it gives you a prediction of about 83 years old for this particular country, which I think is Australia. Um, so very easy to deploy for both real-time and batch scoring. Before I head back to the dashboard and show you how we interact from that, I just want to mention one other thing. Uh, I mentioned that Emily was building these um, uh, Python notebooks. Uh, and you'll see, in fact, although I use mostly these out-of-the-box um, uh, modeling operators for building the regressions, uh, that's what Prem did, he also asked um, for an Adaboost model. Uh, and uh, Emily had a particular version of that that she had in scikit-learn. And so she coded that up in this Python notebook. This is a Python execute model. It's actually run using, it, what it does, it runs this Python notebook. Here it is that Emily developed here uh, that builds the Adaboost model and ships the results back. She's writing this just as she would any other Python notebook. But because this is operating within TIBCO data science, we're able to analyze that code and make it available as a node for Prem to execute within his visual workflow. So a really nice integration there. Um, notebooks being callable from visual workflows and, as it happens, vice versa. Anyway, the point was we developed these measures of variable importance in this workflow, and it was then very easy for us to ship those back to Spotfire via the data function that Michael mentioned. So let me open up this dashboard uh, once more, uh, and here's the result, and this is what Neil did. Neil actually managed to build uh, a simple 
uh, interface here into the TIPCO data science platform using our uh, big data uh, data function, as we like to call it. Um, and that executes the visual workflow on the back end in TIPCO data science, and then produces the results, uh, yields the results back to this dashboard. So it's very easy then for the data scientist to work within the visual workflows and Python notebooks, but then to make those results available back to the business analyst, Neil in this case, for viewing within the dashboard, oblivious essentially uh, for, a, for a casual viewer of this dashboard that what it's actually doing is running these complex workflows in the background. So here you see, for example, the results of the modeling um, might not typically have this in the dashboard, but you can see here uh, the results of the predicted versus actuals that we were building in that workflow. Here are the measures of variable importance for a particular country, in this case, Australia versus worldwide. And here's another way of viewing that. Uh, on the left, the measures of variable importance for the worldwide models versus the country specific model. So you can see, for example, this variable, which is uh, female underemployment, uh, is much less significant for Australia than it is worldwide. Whereas on the other hand, if you look at these two variables here, so that's the percentage of the female population uh, with no education, as well as the consumer price index, are particularly important for Australia and perhaps less important in general for other countries. So very easy for me to use the power of Spotify here to explore my data, both on the front end to get used to it, to figure out what questions I want to ask, to then pass that onto the data science team for producing more sophisticated analyses, uh, and then back to the dashboard to yield the results of those analysis uh, for the business analyst. So I hope that makes it uh, at least a little bit clear how those different personas can interact with each other through TIPCO Data Science and Spotfire, and to build an integrated analytics pipeline from data prep all the way through to predictive models, that can be deployed in batch or real time, and then ultimately out to visual applications.